Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm taking a very close look at the new looper in the Quad Cortex, firmware 1.3.0. So let's get straight into this, I'm using my vocal mic. Everything you hear today is going through the Quad Cortex, not my Apollo Twin X. This thing is also a very good audio interface as well. Let's get straight into this, I'm in stomp mode. You can see that here on the top right, it says stomp. If you're not, then tap on that until you get to stomp. I'm going to add my looper here. Select the looper, and you want looper X. There it is. Now, to get into this, you can tap the button it's assigned, which is the red button, which corresponds with the red on the icon, and that will open your looper. To get out of the looper, press this button here, which is normally your preset up. Press that, and you're out again. You can also tap on the touchscreen, of course, and that will enter it. So, here we are, this thing is stunning, it looks fantastic. I love this interface, I love how modern this is. And this is almost like a digital audio workstation, like a door, it's really clever. Let's start with the basics. So you can see on the screen here, you've got your parameters at the top. And by the way, when you press that, you can't use the foot switches, but you can use the touchscreen still. Buttons one, two, and three, tabs at the top there. In fact, let's start with that. So playback level, of course, how loud is the loop you've recorded? If the default is uh, zero dB. The overdub level, some people want their overdub to be quieter than the main uh, recording. A high pass and low pass, that's nice because it allows you to actually take away some of the highs or the lows from the loops that you're recording. That's really cool, they've added that. And the threshold for the recording. So what this does is, when the threshold is turned on, it's like a noise gate, so you have to be a certain volume for it to start recording. And Neural have been very clever with this. This is great for guitarists, if you think about it because you can hit record and then when you start strumming your guitar, it will record at that moment. You haven't got to press the foot switch like you do on most loopers. Now there is a way around this. If you don't want that, you can turn this threshold here down to zero off and now it's just like a regular looper. When you hit record, it records. But I really like that. So I'm gonna put that back up there to negative 40. Look, it's very hard to get it right on negative 40 with this encoder, but you just double tap on the dial and it goes to negative 40, that's nice too. So the next page is here, number page two. This is your toggle or momentary. So this means do you wanna press the foot switch down like a switch, or do you want it to be momentary so it's depressed and it's on, and when you release your foot, it's off. Again, great control for people that want that. I'll leave mine in toggle for today. Then there's duplicate mode. I'll show you duplicate mode, but that can be the synced to the first loop or free. Free is normally for people that want to do really kind of trippy kind of soundscape stuff. And sync is for more for people that want to actually play a song. So think of it like that. So I'll leave that in sync for now. Punch mode, you can punch in and out here like you can in Logic. So that can be again, toggle or momentary. So again, if you hold down in momentary mode and then release your foot, it will stop or you can toggle it on or off. So basically, are you pressing down and then pressing down again to turn it off? Or are you pressing down and holding and then removing your foot? That's the difference between those two. Then you've got many, many different routing modes here. So you can actually send the signal wherever you want. So it's really flexible. I'm gonna leave mine on the grid for now because I'm routing it from the grid on the main screen. Page three quantize and MIDI clock. We're gonna cover this as well today. I've got a Beat Buddy drum machine that I'm gonna sync up with this as well. It's great that the Quad Cortex now can accept MIDI clock in, that's really powerful. So we'll go back to performance mode. And this is great because you can use the screen, the touch screen to start and stop loops and control everything. Because remember, some people are singers and they use this on a stand, and they use their hands. And of course, guitarists will use it on the floor and use these switches with their feet. You can use either and that's really nice on this. It opens up a lot of possibilities. So let's try one. I'm using my, my voice today, remember? I'm not playing guitar today. I'm just gonna talk. So I'll hit record and then once I start counting, it will record. It's listening for me to make a noise, okay? So check this out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's a basic loop. There was a slight glitch in there. Let me try that again. You have to be careful when you press the button. You have to practice that with any kind of looper. Make sure you get it just right or you get that weird glitchy sound. One, two, three, four. 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 The glitch was not my timing, which it usually is. It was the fact I'm using a vocal mic, a very sensitive vocal mic, 
And what's happening is these foot switches are being picked up by the microphone. Well, that's why if you're a singer, this is great because you can use the touch screen. Check this out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Too. If you press lightly on the screen, you won't get that click. So that's great for singers. I just thought this today when I set up the microphone. Obviously for a guitarist, this is not an issue because you're using your feet and it's not going to pick up the sound of the guitar. But if you are a singer using this on a tabletop, and there might be some people out there doing that, that's cool that you can use the touch screen as well. Very nice uh, touch. But like I said, you can also turn that mode off where it's waiting to hear you start, or you can even just start when you press record like you can on a conventional looper. So like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So it's really cool. You can use it either way. And you can turn it off if you don't want it, but I like having both options. Very, very cool stuff. All right, so what else do we have here? We have your regular stuff. We have like a reverse mode, so it goes backwards. That sounds like this. One, two, no, off, here, <laughs> no, off, here. <laughs> Now, you didn't think about doing this, did you? You're a guitar player watching this, right? You should set up a microphone into this thing and have some fun <laughs> trying to say things backwards and then playing them backwards again. <laughs> Off, Press here, it again. Three. Press it again, it goes back the other way. An undo button to undo the last thing you did. We'll get into that in a second. One shot will play it once and then stop. One, two, three, four. Now, why would you want that? Well, let's say you're jamming along, and at the end of that last loop, you're gonna finish the song or move into another section. Rather than having to press the stop button yourself, you can just hit that and it'll play that one more time and stop. So just imagine that scenario, it's really useful. These kind of foot-free options are great because you can hit record and it records you when you start playing, and then you can also have it so it stops by itself as well when you press one shot. So let's say you play the loop a few times. One, two, Three. See so a jamming, four, jamming, jamming. One, two. Three. Jamming, jamming, four, jamming. One. This is the last two, time. Three. Four. So you just touch that on the last time and it will stop the loop for you at exactly the right place. You haven't got to make sure you tap it at the right place. Then half speed, of course, you know what that does. One. Two. Three. Four. You could even go crazy, do half speed and reverse. Yeah. Two, this could be the funniest video I've ever done, depending on what I say on the microphone. Um, and then punch in, isn't this just great? I'm so excited with this. Punch in, you can replace something like you can in Logic Pro. Check this out. One, two, three, so four. One, two, five, four. One, two, five, four. One, two, five. You can actually go over it like you can in Logic. Now, if you messed up, you don't want that, you can just undo it, of course, anytime. One, two, three, four. One, and you can redo it. Two, five, four. So this thing is really powerful. Is it as powerful as a dedicated looper? No, but they really knocked out of the park with this. This is fantastic. They're, and they're thinking like musicians, right? They're not thinking, let's just throw a looper in this thing. They're thinking with this looper, what can it, we do to actually make it suit the form factor and suit the people that are using it. And I really take my hat off to Neural DSP for doing that. So the great thing on the screen is you can see where you are in the loop. One, two, three, four. And if you want to overdub, then you can also see where the overdub is as well. So the overdub, you'll play the loop and then you'll overdub like this. One, two, three, 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 four, three, one, two, three, 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 four, three, one, two, so it's as simple as just pressing the record button again. Now, when you record a loop, by the way, there's no delete button here. We just record again. It goes right over the top, which makes a lot of sense. I think it's a cool, cool move. But it is good to have a stop button for this reason. I might be talking now, and rather than at the end of my sentence, I want to play that back to you, I might want to save it for later. Or in a song, I might be playing my verse, and I could be recording it while I'm playing the verse and singing, but I don't want to play when I finish. I want to finish and then I want it to stop but be in the memory so when I come to the solo I can trigger it instantly. Because there's nothing worse than watching someone stand there and record their loop to play over and then play over it. I should know because I do that all the time because I forget to record it. But that's such a cool option to have. Now, it'd be great if they added an actual stop button to this. But there's a workaround and I'll show you what it is. So you hit record and you record what you're going to do. 
So this is the verse right now. I'm singing and playing the guitar at the same time and I'm getting this ready for later on. And I don't want people to hear this because if I hit play now, it's going to play it. I don't want to play it. So I'm going to hit undo. Okay. Now, what you have to do now is press redo. So you have to press it twice effectively. And now if you hit play, so this is the verse right now. I'm singing and playing the guitar at the same time and I'm getting this ready. So that's a workaround. You hit record, you record what you're going to have. So you're playing the verse, you're singing, you're secretly recording that. No one knows you're doing that. You hit undo twice at the end. So obviously you hit undo at the end of the loop and then you make sure you press it a second time. And then later on when you're about to take your solo, here comes that big rock solo. You're secretly recording that. No one. There we go. Really, really cool. And it'd be great if they added the stop button, but there we go. Because if you record normally and it starts recording, and then you hit that recording button again and it starts recording. It goes and into overdub mode. Button again, and it starts recording. It goes and into you hit overdub recording mode. Button again, and it starts. Okay, so you can go straight into an overdub. You can go straight into playing. And by pressing undo twice, you can stop and save that loop for later effectively. And there's something else this does which is mind blowing to me. Duplicate. This will take your loop. And as you solo over that loop, rather than cut you off and take you back to the start of the loop after one bar, and it'll be too short. It will just keep copying that original loop and you can reuse it. So check this out. I'll give you an example. So you record your first loop. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Two. So obviously if you record over that normally, so you take a solo and you go um one solo, 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 and so solo, solo. You see what happens? One, so two, three. It cut me off. It just went back to the start of the loop. But check this out. If you press play and then press duplicate. It will duplicate those loops as long as you want it to. So check this out. Play. One, duplicate. Two, three, four. One, two, solo, three, solo, four. solo, One, solo, two, two three, solo, four. two, One, solo, three, three solo, three, three four. solo, four, One, solo, four, two, three, solo, four, solo, five, four. One, solo, solo, three, five. Four. One, solo, three, five. One, solo, 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 two, solo. So it's extended the loop, effectively giving you like a two track looper in a way. Not really. This doesn't do like verse and chorus and things like that, but it allows you to solo over one bar as long as you want to. That is really clever. It's like what they're doing with the Ditto X looper. Really smart. And then you see up here, it says available four minutes, 31 seconds. That's a lot of loop time. That's really impressive. But I figured this out as well. If you press the half speed button, you get nine minutes and one second. So if you really want to do a really long loop, you can. Obviously, you lose that ability then to do half speed, but you get more time. And the quality still seems very good, actually. Check this out. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. This seems fine to me. So I would never use that, but there's a little tip there if you need it. So I think that covers everything. The effects, the punch in mode, how I record, the different features available. What we're going to do next is plug in the Beat Buddy drum machine. And I'm going to assign it to input two and multi out again. And let's start that to see if it's coming through. Okay, so there's some drums there. Now, the great thing with the quad cortex, of course, is that we can also affect those drums with the effects here. So, for example, you could add a pitch block. And you could change the pitch. You can add reverb, EQ, distortion, anything. You can make those drums sound exactly how you want them to. But with most loopers, what will happen is if you loop over this and it's not in sync, if the MIDI clock sync isn't turned on, what will happen is it will eventually drift out. It's just impossible to count in time with the drum machine and loop it at the same time. If your MIDI clock here is turned off and you record. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. It just won't stay in sync because it hasn't got the MIDI clock. So what you do is you go to parameters. You plug this in with the MIDI cable. Make sure MIDI clock is being sent from the device. Today I'm using the Beat Buddy. It could be anything that sends MIDI clock. Uh, drum machines are the obvious one. Turn on the MIDI clock here. So I'm going to turn quantize on for this. I'll do four beats and turn the clock on. Okay, so now check this out. 
One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. So it's staying in perfect sync there. Again, with the Eros Looper, it will do things like when you start the beat buddy, it will also start recording, have like four independent tracks, eight tracks, whatever. It's much more powerful than this. But if you've got a beat buddy drum machine lying around or a drum machine with MIDI clock out lying around, this is a really great way to jam over drums. For me, it's so much more fun to play over a backing track or drums or something like that. And also a lot of the iPad apps have, uh, because this has USB audio and MIDI too. So if you connect your iPad to this and find a drum machine with MIDI A, which most of them have, this will also sync to it. So it's just making sure it doesn't, it doesn't drift out. It's just making sure that the drums and the loop stay in time for the, for the whole time you're playing it, and then you can play over the top. But that's really, really useful. And then speaking about MIDI, another thing that's important I feel is that on the main screen here, if you're performing a show and you want to take a loop, you can't just press record. You can't add a record button to the main screen. Hopefully they will add this because you can do this on like the Line 6 Helix. You can put whatever command you want on these switches. But even if they do that, you're limited to your switches, aren't you? I'd rather offload them to something else. I think if you're going to do a lot of looping with this, you should use a MIDI controller. Now there's two that I love at the moment. The Morningstar MC8 has screens and eight switches and multiple banks. And it's a fantastic product, a great pedal. I use mine all the time, I love it. I highly recommend that. If you can, if you can have this on the board, put the MC8 next to it. It's a great pedal. The only thing is, I am also using the AirStep by Exonic. Now this is great too, because it's battery powered. So you can show up to a show, if you don't use a pedal board, show up to a gig, put this on the ground, put that down, plug it in one cable. You can use wireless Bluetooth MIDI, but I've had bad experiences with that. I'd rather have a cable for looping because I want it to be no latency as well. So the Exonic AirStep has five switches on it. And what you can then do is program them for what you want. So I might program switch one to be record. So that way, rather than at the gig, I have to go into the looper and then press record. I can just press record on my Exonic AirStep and it will record. And you can assign a different looper command to each of those foot switches. So you might want record and play and undo and duplicate and punch in on that controller. And also you can do other stuff with MIDI 2 with the Quad Cortex. All the commands are in the manual. I'm gonna show the commands for the looper on the screen right now. And then all you do is you go into your MIDI pedals editor on your phone or desktop or have you do it on the device, whatever. Type that command in. And when you press the button on that pedal, this will then be triggered. So I've been doing that as well. It's really cool. And it's very simple. The commands are right there. So you can see on the screen all the commands for the looper. All your MIDI commands are there. You can turn blocks on and off. You can enter gig view by MIDI foot switch. It's really powerful. Adds a lot more functionality to your pedal. And if you go to the looper MIDI commands, which are right here, this is where you get your information. So on your MIDI controller, you need to set up one switch to be a toggle switch and CC48. When it says value 64 to 127, that can be any value. So I would do CC number 48, enter that, and then the value I'd put 127, just because that's easy. And then that switch will open the loop, looper UI. I don't really need that because I've got the button on the main screen anyway, but there's another one here, look, record. So CC53, and then zero to 63 is stop recording. 64 to 127 is record over double stop. So I do CC53127, and that then works as the button E on the screen. So you've always got access to that. And then undo is CC number 56, put in 127. It's gonna undo and redo. So you have access to those switches without having to go into the looper view. You can still go into the looper view, but this effectively means your looper controls are always there, ready to go. And then if you use something like the MC8 with all those extra switches, you can have even more buttons for like a, the tuner or switch on gig view. There's so much you can do. The MIDI really unlocks the device. And while it's not essential, and I do agree that you should be able to do everything from the device itself, which you can, it just adds a ton more flexibility. Okay, so thanks for watching today. I hope you found this useful and informative. And if you did, please subscribe and ring the bell because I'm sure to make more videos like this in the future as new features are released. And I also do a lot of live performances, gear reviews and interviews here as well. So check out those when you can and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.